Hello, everybody, and welcome to our forum today, and welcome to Collage Live Online. My name is Rick Cassini Cador, and I am the editor and publisher of Collage Magazine. Collage Live Online is a virtual series of programs by Collage Institute that seeks to deepen our understanding of collage as a medium, a genre, a community, and a 21st century movement. I invite you to be a part of this event by posting questions in the chat and using the Q&A function. Christopher Kurtz, the coordinator of Collage Institute, will be moderating the questions. And if interested, he can bring folks on mic or on video so that uh, you and I can chat in person. So let's get started. Today, I will share with you some ways in which one can both submit to the magazine and be featured. At Collage Magazine, we uh, are often asked by artists how to be featured in the magazine, how to list an exhibition, or how to get a book listed on Collage Books. And so today we're going to talk about all of those things. But I want to start by talking a little bit about this event and what it's about. Because frankly, uh, magazines don't do this. Galleries don't do this. Um, this is not something that is a convention in the art world where an editor uh, goes on to a forum and says, well, this is how you engage with us. But we're doing this as part of Collage Institute because we, we want you to be successful. We want you to be successful with us and we want you to be successful with any publication, gallery, museum, whoever you reach out to. That this is really about kind of how one communicates about their work in the art world in a way that gets it seen, that gets it the attention that it deserves. And so today we'll go through some nuts and bolts of Collage Magazine, but keep in mind that I think hopefully some of what we talk about is really relevant to any publication or any gallery or museum that you wanna reach out to. Again, I welcome your questions and um, uh, look forward to hearing them. So I wanna start out with a tour of Collage Magazine. We are first, oops, we are first and foremost a print magazine. That is our, our heart and soul and ultimately what we are about. And so our primary goal there is to uh, document the collage world, to produce a print, printed magazine, and to serve our readers. And if you haven't seen a copy of the magazine or are not reading the magazine, I, I strongly suggest that you do that with any publication you want to reach out to. That knowing what the magazine is about, what they fo focus on, all of that is super important because otherwise you're talking or trying to speak to uh, an audience and you don't know who that audience is. So the, in addition to the magazine, we have the artist directory and this artist directory has been uh i think it's been around for five or six years now and you know this is a, a tool for gathering information about collage artists it's where we go to when we um are creating content for the magazine it's where i go to when i'm starting to curate an exhibition and i start to look and see what different artists are doing and what their practice is about. That what I'm interested in is in addition to seeing the images of the artwork is I want to know who this person is, what their bio is, how they're kind of putting their art out into the world. And I also want to know, frankly, what their work is about, what they think their work is about. And I'm going to speak a little bit about that point a little later. But let's keep, keep on with our tour of Collage Magazine. Uh, we have a site called Collage Books, and this was a project started a couple of years ago uh, where we really came to see publications as a vital way in which collage was making its way out into the world. And we thought it was important to start documenting um, these publications because this is the archive of, uh, of collage and collage making. And this is how a lot of collage is being put out into the world. And, and so as folks make books, we encourage them to submit to collage books. 
We also have a directory of collage communities. This is fairly new. This was an a, a initiative of Collage Institute that we started last year and one that uh, has recently resulted in a publication of a printed um, publication of collage directories. And again, with each of these different sites, as you visit them, um, there's instructions on how to submit to them. Keeping, um, keeping on our tour, uh, we produce about a, about a weekly newsletter that is a kind of summary of what we're looking at, what's going on. Um, in that respect, we look at examples from the artist directory. We look at publications. We look at things that are happening in the uh, collage world. Uh, and we look at exhibitions. And uh, we encourage folks to submit exhibitions to us. In the art world, the exhibition is how an artist presents their work to the general public. And it is um, almost the, the first and foremost way in which I think um, that process of art moving from the artist and the studio to the broader world uh, kind of starts. And so exhibitions are something that we cover very regularly. And we rely on people to send us information about those ex exhibitions, but we're also constantly keeping an eye out for them and looking for ones that we think are important to talk about and cover. Continuing with our tour, World Collage Day. Uh, this is from last year's website. World Collage Day will be taking uh, place in the second Saturday of May 2021. Come pandemic or not, we are going to celebrate that holiday. With World Collage Day, we, uh, there are two ways to participate. One is um, we have uh, events. We uh, solicit and promote events from around, uh, around the world that are taking place on that day. And we're just about in the next couple weeks starting to kind of roll out some information uh, and some tips for building event in your own community. But another way to participate is we do a special edition for that event. And that takes place, uh, uh, and that special edition has um, often based around cutout pages and uh, that's a, another way to participate. In addition to Col World Collage Day, we produce Collage Fest New Orleans. A little tempered this last year with the pandemic, but as vaccinations roll out, we are essentially watching the world and waiting to see when it is possible for us to meet in person again. And when that uh, sign is clear, we will um, schedule and promote a Collage Fest in New Orleans. Collage Fest is a gathering of collage artists for three, four, five days. And where we come together, we have workshops, we have talks, we visit galleries and museums, and there is a, a incredibly active collage making space. And that's another part of collage, uh, our little world here. And then next is the Collage Institute. And Collage Institute uh, has a couple of different things. One is um, <clears throat> uh, we have um, programs that uh, started last year and then got derailed a little bit by the pandemic, but they're still taping shape. And those are about really looking at artist archive residencies as well as fellowships. And these are opportunities for folks who want to dive a little deeper and um, study collage or study an aspect of collage. So Kike Congrains, who many folks know from Instagram and around, he's been studying Latin American collage the last couple months. And a lot of his work will be um, starting to come out. We also produce traveling exhibitions and programs, such as a symposium on collage books or a traveling exhibit called Where the Sun Casts No Shadow. And in the coming year, we'll be curating some exhibitions that will uh, possibly travel depending on how the world is set up. We also offer artist labs. This last year we did two artist labs, um, uh, both with Tulane University, where we're looking at kind of how artists can pick up the unfinished work of history 
and incorporate history into their own art practice. And those are all based on calls to artists that come out occasionally. The other thing Collage Institute does is um, produce publications. And we're starting to really kind of ramp up our publication uh, schedule. We produce about a publication a month now. Um, the most recent one is Unfamiliar Vegetables, which is a book about an exhibition the Mystical Crew of Scissors included at Collage Fest 2019. And it's really looking at variations in collage. We've produced the International Directory of Collage Communities, uh, the first print edition. The next one will come out in two years. And we also produce books like uh, Radical Reimaginings, which was um, a companion to an exhibition that is still on view at 516 Arts in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And as we uh, kind of move forward, we're looking for different ways in which we can uh, publish uh, collage artists and the work of collage artists. But for those who are involved with projects and uh, other initiatives, we often find that those make um, really good books. And it's a way to document in print both the work that is doing as well as the activity that took place. And that by putting it in print, uh, what you do is you end up um, kind of locking it in. Um, it moves it from online, it moves it to uh, a material object that can go into an archive or a library. And a lot of what we do at Collage Magazine and a lot of how we think is how are we documenting this community? How are we documenting this movement? So that's a brief uh, overview and tour of the different things going on at Collage Magazine. As many folks know, we operate, uh, are fairly active on social media. We have an Instagram account. We have a Facebook account. We have a Tumblr account uh, and are constantly posting our information there as well as in our weekly newsletter, which you have to sign up via email to uh, receive if you don't already. Um, as uh, I want to talk about a primer we have on our website called How To Collage and just kind of point out a couple things here. And uh, the, in terms of submitting to the magazine, the, the number one um, way to kind of get on our radar is to join the artist directory. And the reason for this is, is twofold. One is uh, the artist directory is set up so that it gathers all of the information we need to kind of understand who you are as an artist. Uh, the, the primary way of, of submitting to um, Collage Magazine. The second way is that when you have a collage exhibition, let us know about that exhibition. Uh, it's, you know, we, we, I spent a lot of time following a number of galleries, a number of artists, and it can be surprisingly difficult to uh, get information about an exhibition that's taking place. But pretty much, if there's an exhibition of collage, even if you're part of a larger group show where you're the only collage artist in that show, we want to hear about it because that is important information to us about how collage is being put out into the world. And to that end, we have a, a tool here that has you submit uh, you can submit your ex exhibition and you don't have to use this tool, but if you don't, if your gallery or venue doesn't have a press kit, this is going to ask you to pull together all of the information that should be in a press kit. And here's the thing. If you can pull together all of this information for us, then you can pull this information for any publication that's out there. And again, we want you to be successful, not just with us, but also with every other publication that's out there. And so with the exhibition, the title, the artist names, curators, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you know, this, I'm gonna speak a little bit about this exhibition statement or press release um, moving forward, but then some basic just nuts and bolts information. Where's the venue? Uh, what's the venue's website? Um, how do we contact the venue? And then images, we are, driven by images. Um, 
We're an art publication. We operate art websites. Everything is about the images. And the image, images themselves should be of good quality. Meaning for online, they need to be at least 700 pixels wide. For in print, they need to be at least 1500 pixels wide and preferably in the kind of 2500 pixels um, high or tall range in order for them to operate well in a print publication. We also, the, the quality of the images need to be strong and they need to be uh, edited. The, the, the artwork needs to be square, <laughs> if the artwork is square. And, uh, and it needs to be reflective of, of the artwork and showing it in the best way possible. There are tons of websites about how to document your artwork, um, how to scan your artwork. And uh, I'm not going to get into the nuts and bolts of that, but finding a, a, a strategy for getting good images is absolutely key to promoting one's artwork in general. Uh, submitting your collage exhibitions is one way. Now we get into the trickier stuff, right? Make a great collage. Now I know everyone here makes a great collage. Here's the harder part. Know why it's great. This is, I would say, absolutely the, the biggest, most challenging thing for artists when they're starting out that they are creating a body of work, it looks fantastic, but they don't necessarily know how to tell the story of it. What is the context? Context is incredibly important. Why does it matter? Why does it matter for other people to see it? How is it contributing to a conversation about art or collage or the civic discourse or just telling a story that people need to hear. So knowing why your work needs to be seen and having an argument for that, a, a way of saying, this is why I think this is important, is, is part of, I think, making great artwork on top of that. Um, next, and this kind of goes into uh, number three a little bit, look and read about collage. That a lot of folks are talking about Dadaism and surrealism. And a lot of times folks use those two terms not realizing that they're very different things. And um, a lot of times people talk about their work in conversation with Kurt Schwitters. And the thing is, we've had a hundred years of collage art since Kurt Schwitters. And it's gone in a lot of different directions. And it's helpful to knowing why your collage is great if you can speak about uh, what's going on in the world of collage and how your work fits into that conversation. And so just as a doctor needs to kind of constantly be reading medical literature, as collage artists, we need to constantly be understanding what's going on in the collage world, who's doing what. And it's one thing to look at it visually. It's another thing to see it broken down in words because what you get when it's broken down in words is a way to develop your own language for talking about your own work. And that can be really difficult, but it takes practice and it takes a little bit of time and it takes a little bit of kind of just learning the landscape a little bit. But once you can do it, then doors open up. Because if you can have a conversation about your work, not only show your work, but talk about it, then all of a sudden we can engage with you. We are a publication. We are by nature uh, uh, struggling to find words to talk about things that are inherently visual. And so we need a partner with the people we talk about and write about who can kind of start that conversation. A uh, Couple other um, options. I'm not actually gonna go through this whole list. Um, occasionally we put out calls, we are always uh, curious about um, people's studio spaces. And so there are details here. If you click this link, um, we'll take you to how to send us images of your studio. And that's a way for us to talk about who you are and what your work is. Personally, I love seeing artists' workspace. I think it is incredibly um, revealing and insightful. And I'm generally interested in one's art practice. How do they make that? How do they think about their materials and sometimes a picture 
of how they store their materials is incredibly revealing. And frankly, I don't care if your studio is uh, a gorgeous Manhattan loft or your kitchen table in a cabin in the woods. I think what I care about in uh, looking at kind of the, in the studio submissions is just how are you working and telling that story of who you are as an artist and where you're making that work. Uh, another way to participate is a cutout page. I think cutout, I love cutout pages. Um, I never use them. It's kind of funny, but what I love about them, what I absolutely love about them, is seeing an artist who's kind of breaking down their process and practice into just fragments, you know, just into the little pieces that they could use to make something. It's like a little window into the mind of process. And I think they're incredibly edifying. Uh, they're easy to make. It's literally uh, collect a bunch of fragments, arrange it in an eight and a half, eight by 10 space on a scanner bed, close the scanner lid and scan. You can also do it digitally and cut out each of the fragments and arrange it in that space. But that's another way to kind of be featured in the magazine. Um, so that's, um, there's other things here. Some of the things we already talked about. Um, I will talk about this last one down here, writing for Collage Magazine. Uh, we, we are and aspire to be as community driven oriented as possible. And so we, we are interested in the stories you have to tell. We're interested in first person stories, but I would say more often than not, we're interested in kind of what you see in the world and what collage you see in the world or community you see in the world and why you think it is relevant and important for other people to hear about it. Some of that is history. Some of that is, I found this collage artist from the 70s. I want to tell their story because they, their story deserves to be ter uh, told. You know, sometimes it's uh, uh, in the Collage 30, there's an, um, a, p a piece called uh, The Tale of Two Collage Artists. And it came out of an email I got from uh, Heather, who was sending um, a piece to the Schwitter Army, who talked about how her correspondence with this other artist, Melanie, has shaped her collage work. I found that an incredibly compelling story and one that I wanted them to tell. And so we worked with them to each kind of tell their story. And we understand, uh, I understand as an editor, not everyone is conf confident in their writing. Not everyone feels like they're um, a great writer. And some people absolutely suck at writing. Uh, so, but more often than not, what I find is that people, when they have a story to tell, can tell that story. And my editorial philosophy is, I will work with you. If you have a good story and you're struggling with the writing, I will work with you. If that story needs to be told, we will find a way to tell it. And that's another way to contribute and participate in this um, uh, it, with the magazine. Uh, I'm gonna change gears a little bit, stop my share uh, so I can see the, sh the chat with folks. Um, uh, I wanna uh, just kind of wrap up the presentation part before we move into questions with uh, a couple of things. Um, uh, I'm gonna get real. I'm gonna get real with you all for a minute. Okay, so it's really interesting on my side of this um, uh, relationship. You know, we we produce this magazine, and this magazine has been um, in, an incredible journey over the last ten years, uh, getting to know and becoming part of this community. And um, one of the things I love about collage artists is their enthusiasm, their absolute enthusiasm for the medium and for engaging. It is refreshing. The art world can be cold. The art world can be dismissive. And um, collage artists are willing to kind of jump in and go with it. One of the, one of the weird things that, that happens as editor of the magazine is um, I often feel overwhelmed with how much is coming at me. That 
Um, I, you know, am obsessive about my phone. <laughs> um, I get all of the alerts from Facebook, social media, Instagram, and so on. And it can be a little overwhelming at times. I would say that there's between 20 and 30 um, folks a day who are reaching out and, and trying to get my attention. And then there's generally um, five or six folks that I'm trying to kind of focus on and work with because that's the next step of a project, whether it's a publication or getting their content online or, or something along um, or, or bringing them into an exhibition, those sorts of things. And so it can be a lot to juggle. And there's a lot of people swimming in my head and kind of um, coming at me. And I always feel bad um, because I can't always give everyone the attention that they deserve. And I can't always meet people where they're at. And oftentimes what happens is someone will send a message on Instagram and say, hey, would you check out my Instagram account? And sometimes I can stop and do that. Sometimes I'm living my life. I'm at a bar, it's three o'clock in the morning. I can't do that <laughs> because I won't remember the next day. Um, you know, sometimes I'm on deadline and busy with a project and it can be uh, not the time for me to actually consider someone's work. Um, and it's also just, well, it's, it's a common convention in, in social media. It's really not how um, art magazines function. That more than anything, we need context. That I need to not just see images, I need to know what this is about. And I need to know who this is coming from. And uh, what the broader story, how does it fit into the world? And I cannot get that looking at someone's Instagram account. I can kind of see where they're at in the moment and, and what's going on, but I need a link to a website. I need an artist statement. I need a bio. I need to see kind of a strategy and uh, a body of work, not just a single work. And so those are the things I look for. And it, it, again, we want all collage artists to be as successful as they can be. And, um, but part of what we need is other folks to kind of figure out how to package and present themselves in a way that we can start that conversation. So that's part of you know, what I wanted to talk about today. I would say a couple other kind of observations or things you know, when we look at content, we, um, uh, and this is, we serve, you know, at, at Collage Magazine and also Collage Institute, we serve the people who read the magazine, who attend the events, who read our books. I care very deeply about and think a lot about readers and viewers and how people are experiencing collage. Now that, I'm not saying that to say, oh, if you're not reading or subscribing to the magazine, you know, I don't care about you. It's just, the, it's not that at all. What I'm trying to say is that, you know, when we, when we talk about collage, we're not talking about it for the benefit of the artist who made it. We're talking about it for the benefit of the reader, for the benefit of the viewer in the gallery, for the benefit of the world at large. Um, our job is to say to them, hey, this is worth taking a look at. And uh, this is why, you know, the artist has already done their work at that point. This is about building that audience. And so keep that in mind. And I think that's not so unique for editors that um, all the editors I've worked with, it's always more important to consider what the reader needs and what the reader is, uh, has to gather and understand than, than what the artist might need in terms of their own um, career and promotion. So it's, it's a subtle distinction and it's not that we don't care about artists, you know, it's that the focus needs to be there. A couple other uh, points. Um, a lot of folks ask for feedback on their art and I don't know that it's my place to give that critical feedback that as artists, we, um, as artists, we need to cultivate a circle of peers who can provide us critical feedback, and that when we engage with other professionals, a gallerist, an editor, an art writer, 
it's not the time for critical feedback, it's something else. Um, and so that's, uh, I think, something important to keep in mind. The, the reality is, is that through the process of curating artwork, through the process of writing artwork, there's criticism and there is feedback that comes from that process. But it's different than, you know, what do you think I should do with my collage or how, how should I take it to the next level? Um, I would say that uh, a couple other thoughts, you know, we want to be respected. And we, I think, speaking for myself and Christopher Kurtz and Christopher Byrne, um, we want to be respected for what we do. We, we, want to, um, we want to do a really good job and we want to put our best work out there. Um, and we want to respect others that when we decide to write about an artist or feature them in the magazine or in a project, we want to honor that moment and say, wow, how do we, how do we, how do we treat them right in the best way possible so that, that their work is seen and is reaching a broader audience? That that's kind of the respect, the mutual respect that's needed um, to, in, in, in doing this culture work. And we also want to work with people and who are respecting and caring about others. Um, this is, uh, you know, for me, it's um, really important to, and this is one of the things I love about Collage Fest. Um, it's important that this community remain kind to one another, that we care about one another, that we're supporting and championing each other. And I love nothing more than to see those artists who are constantly talking about other artists. Um, and, you know, because it's, it's I, I think that's what we all kind of need. And it also shows a real sense of community spirit and mutual respect. And I have an enormous amount of respect for that. But, and I want to just shout out in particular to those artists who create projects, promote other artists, organize exhibitions, um, collaborate with one another. Uh, those are um, those are artists I have just incredible, incredible respect for. Um, I would also say that you know uh, we move really slowly, and we work ahead, way, way ahead of schedule. That this week, in the in the in the next week, we're we're focused finalizing the next issue of the print magazine, and some of that work started six months ago. Our newsletter and social media are uh, often planned weeks in advance. And it is not a process of immediate. We don't, sometimes we can move very fast, but sometimes if we get an exhibition announcement or a collage book submission, it can take a couple weeks before we get there. Um, and that can be, I think, frustrating for folks, but it's also just important to know. Um, you know, we're currently thinking about issues of the magazine that come out in March and June. We're thinking of a special ed edition of the magazine for World Collage Day that will come out in April. And so we think way far ahead on these things. And sometimes people can be frustrated when they don't even get an email for three weeks because I was busy kind of wrapping up the issue. Um, sometimes not getting a response is the best response because it means that email sitting in my box because I want to take the time with it. Um, and so, uh, you know, keep, keep that in, in mind as well. Um, just uh, wrapping up my, pres my presentation part before we move into questions. Um, and I'm really curious to know what you all think about this because I don't see anyone's faces. Um, you know, uh, ask yourself, why does your work matter? Who is your work for? How does what you're making contribute to our understanding of collage, be it its operations, its functions, its place in the world? Uh, where do you fit into the larger world, in art history, in society, into the global conversation? And also, what do you need to learn? Like, what are those skills you need to pick up? I think as artists, we're always growing and developing. And I think being aware of that, I think is, um, is, is part of this process. So um, uh, I want to take some questions. Um, uh, Christopher Kurtz, do we have a question? <laughs> uh, yeah, and I think this um, speaks to something that you were already saying. Um, Elaine asked, um, in an artist bio or, you know, um, 
pre presenting themselves, uh, what is it that you're looking for? Um, process, message, history. Do you want to go into a little bit of detail about what would be great to receive? Sure. Uh, you know, artist statements, um, uh, and I'm going to ask Christopher Byrne to put a link to Wiley Garcia's website in the chat because Wiley Garcia is someone I collaborate with a lot, but she's doing some really good work around helping artists development, develop artist statements and presenting themselves. themselves. But, you know, a, a lot of jokes are made about artist statements and there's a lot of talk about how artist statements are bullshit. And um, there's a lot of artist statements are bullshit and uh, just ridiculous kind of word gloop of art speak that um, doesn't really say anything. I think, you know, what I look for in an artist statement is um, some honesty and some authenticity of just, I do this. And if it's like, literally, I take a, I take a copy of Life magazine, I cut out um, the prettiest image I can, and then I start kind of building a collage with that image. That is way more informative than um, syn synthesizing the social practice of surrealism, blah, 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 right? It's um, <laughs> be real about who you are and, and what you're doing. Um, we often ask, you know, we often ask like artists to be um, the end all and be all things. Um, and one of my favorite artist statements, and I forget who it comes from, was like, I make pretty things, you know, like, okay, that's it. Like, that's essentially what it is. Um, I, I can't write a lot about that because you said it all, you know. Um, but, you know, I appreciate that kind of o open and directness. I think an, a good artist statement should be specific to a body of work. Um, but an artist statement can also be specific to an artist practice. And I would say that if, as an artist, when, if, if an artist is struggling to articulate their practice and their process of making artwork, then it can be very near impossible to make, to write an artist statement. That an artist statement is a reflection of an artist's own self-awareness of what they're doing and what they're making. An artist's bio, you know, in a, in a, in a really technical sense, an artist bio is a, is a narrative of their CV, their resume. Um, it states to their accomplishments. But more helpful is one that speaks to an artist's history and life and, and how their work might have evolved over time. And so, you know, I've completed, I, if, if I just completed my MFA and now I've established my studio practice and now I'm making collage versus um, after, you know, uh, going to art school and then raising a family for 20 years, I'm now returning to art making. Those are two very different, very nascent artists, right? Um, but that's really helpful to understand kind of the bio and the history of an artist. Um, I care a little bit about what's going on in um, someone's life as a human being. Who are they as a human being? If they, where did they grow up? Where did they come from? What has influenced them? Those are all things that might come from uh, either an artist bio or be relevant in an artist statement. If things in your life has informed your artwork, then the bio is a place to kind of state that. Um, did I answer the question, Christopher Kurtz? <laughs> yeah, that, that's great. Um, I think that's uh, going to help people. Um, and then, uh, so uh, another question from um, AC Selen, if I mispronounce your name, I apologize. Um, they said that they're a young collage maker and they're asking how can they show their works to interested people. And I think you kind of went into that, but maybe you can focus on those who are like just up and coming. Like where should they start? Where should they put their energy? Well, you know, I think that where an artist should initially put their energy is in creating a strong initial body of work or series of collage. And uh, that's having that and understanding the process and practice and what went into that and then being able to talk about it. That's, that is a great place for, I think, a, a newer artist to start. And um, it, gets you be, it gets you past the, I'm gonna make a series of individual works that may not relate to each other because sometimes making a series of individual works is really about 
you as an artist working out your voice. And the thing is, you know, I, I, I worry about this sometimes. Um, an artist who is very new, who maybe hasn't figured out their voice or haven't found their voice yet, or maybe they found their voice, but they're still figuring out their practice. I worry sometimes about um, writing about them in a way that locks them into a narrative or a story that six months from them, they have a breakthrough and all of a sudden they're creating something completely different. And that's happened in the magazine where we've, we've written, we're like, hey, this is really amazing. Let's write about it. And then a year later, the artist is doing something completely different. And so, it, you know, the, the pressure to put yourself out there uh, can, be, can be very real, but I think it has to be driven by the work in the studio, the work of making, uh, I think is, is really key and a place to start. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's helpful. Um, that, uh, so I was curious, and also um, Lisa asked a similar question, um, referring to like reading about and learning about collage, are there sources that you would recommend for reading about collage and finding out what's, I mean, other than Collage Magazine, obviously? No, um, you should not read anything other than Collage <laughs> Magazine. <laughs> or, or are there any good like volumes or sources for getting a good art historical foundation in the history of collage, anything like that? Yeah, there's, um, a couple of great, uh, well, a couple thoughts there. One, um, it's not just reading. And I know reading, you know, reading's my jam, but I know re reading isn't everyone's jam. So, uh, you know, you, this is where exhibitions kind of come into play. Um, one of the things I love to do when I go to a new museum, particularly one that has a, a collection of art history, is to go through that museum and find all the examples of collage that I can and really focus on those those works. Uh, there's a couple of great, um, there's a ton of history of, of collages, the, the, uh, too many to actually kind of um, detail, but I would say that the cut and paste exhibit that came out of um, uh, uh, the, the National Galleries of Scotland last year, their, that book is I think a really good um, just overview of the history of collage and, and where collage comes from. I think uh, 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 Danielle Chris's book, uh, Big Important Artwork Now with Women, uh, that has a ton of collage in it. And what I love about what Danielle did was she really told the story of artists as human beings. And I think it's, it's I wish every artist would read that book because um, I thought it was really, really strong and, and, and remarkable. Uh, I think the work Maximatic is doing at the Weird Show, interviewing collage artists, is uh, fantastic. Um, and uh, I think that's worth watching. And I love reading the Collage Research Network's um, uh, blog, because I think that they're, they're finding a lot of interesting things and talking about interesting things there. Um, I think when I look for content, when I, when I want to read about collage and when I seek it out. I look for um, uh, not just a blog that has a lot of images. I look for a discussion of those images. Um, now, I feel really comfortable, comfortable, like just digesting images on my own. And I feel like I see a lot of collage every day. Um, I'm curious to, to read about how, how they're talking about it and sometimes how they're talking about it as not collage. Uh, and how they're creating context and history for it. And so there's, um, for me, it's that, you know, where there's that broader story or narrative uh, being told. Yeah. Looks like we have some more questions. Uh, yeah. Um, and also, I just wanted to comment, there's like a ton of networking and community taking place in the chat right now. Like people are being so loving and kind and they're uh, they're, they're building their own networks, which is exactly what we want to come from this. Um, yeah. Uh, so, okay, so Ginger uh, Sedlarova writes that she has an upcoming show um, with two other artists that involves collage, assemblage, paint, all used together. Um, would this be something collage would consider running in their exhibition segment? And I can say yes, obviously. Absolutely, But, but yeah. <laughs> maybe, you, maybe you could speak briefly on uh, collage's mindset on like the wider variety of collage. Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually working um, after this next issue, I hope to be doing some real writing on this, but 
Um, you know, we talk about collage as a medium, a genre, a community, and a movement, right? And that sounds great, but I think a lot of us don't know what it means. <laughs> when we talk, when I, and I, I've started to articulate it, or try to articulate it in a way that I can communicate with each other, because it's in my head. But you'll probably notice, you see some things occasionally at Collage Magazine that you might go, mm, I don't know that that's collage. We are definitely thinking more broadly than cut and paste. You know, we think uh, uh, cut and paste is fantastic. We think analog collage is a heart and soul and core part of what collage is. Uh, but, not but, but and, we also want to think about it more broadly. So with, with respect to media, you know, I've been thinking a lot about this art practice or operation where there is uh, a surface and there is a fragment and there is glue. Like in a really basic sense, right? That's the, the process. You've got a piece of cardboard, cut out piece from a magazine, glue, boom, you have collage. Like that's theoretically the basis of the medium. Now, David Elliott, who I forget which number he was on, but was on the cover of the magazine, what he does is he will create a diorama of fragments. He'll create a little shoebox, right? And in the shoebox, he'll arrange a bunch of fragments. And then he will paint that, um, that, that, that shoebox as if it's a still life, right? For me, this is genre. Right? The glue, it's not that he's making the shoebox, it's the painting, right? So he's taking these things and he's kind of created this art that the glue is kind of the process of creating the painting. Now, Todd Bartel goes way into this with his theory of uncollage. And so, but I think it's really the core of collage as a genre. In that sense, you see uh, photo montages who, you know, are cutting out the negative, re you know, recreating the negative and then creating a print of that negative. That's so clearly collage genre. I love nothing more than seeing art that challenges and questions the nature of collage. We have um, a fantastic artist whose artist portfolio is gonna be in the next issue. And Guy's process is to take a page from a magazine and um, black out all the parts that um, he thinks are ir irrelevant in order to tell a different story. It's this wonderful in-between decollage and collage, and um, I can't quite be defined, but it's, it's a fascinating process. And now he's focused on that specific operation while other artists are incorporating aspects of that in their work. And so, uh, you know, we take a very broad view of what collage is, and it's, it's meant to prod our interest. You know, if you use thread to bind your fragments together, then the thread becomes the glue, theoretically, right? And we're curious about that. We want to see examples of that, and we want to understand that. And so that's some of our approach. And if you're sitting there thinking, I don't know if this is collage enough for collage, the answer is yes. It is always collage enough. Rarely do we get a submission where I'm just like, hmm, this ain't collage. <laughs> that is very rare. Um, I would say almost, in, in almost, almost impossible that we've gotten those, except for some folks who just spam every like publication they've ever heard of. Um, yeah. Next question. Uh, sure. Um, so uh, I have a question here that I'm not sure I understand, but maybe you'll understand. Um, Adatola asks, how can one become involved in the Black Collage Artist Anthology, either as a collage artist or arts writer? Is that something you're familiar with? Uh, well, we don't have a Black Collage Artist Anthology. I know that uh, Think Magazine has been uh, created a zine of uh, Black Collage, and I know that the Conyer Collection, uh, Lori Conyer, um, is working with an artist who is uh, uh, curating Black Collage. And so there are some, uh, those are two groups out there kind of doing that work that I know of, yeah. Yeah, and, I'm, and, I, and I think all of your advice today is probably helpful towards that question. Like all of the same ideas can be applied. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, when artists submit for, uh, oh, uh, Elaine asks, when artists submit for an exhibition galleries, uh, often they want a theme. 
does Collage Magazine look for cohesion in a body of work that artists submit to the magazine? I do, and, 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 and we do. It's that, um, it's not so much a theme, it's uh, a consistent practice, a consistent process. Um, meaning that, you know, you, you, you want to look for how an artist is working. As a former gallery owner, I will tell you that gallery, galleries look for something a little different than publications. Um, I could pull one of uh, one one um, uh, collage from an artist and write about just that collage. Uh, galleries galleries need to know that if they invest in that artist, that they're going to be able to produce work that is a similar enough that. Uh, they can kind of sell it to a lot of different people. As a curator, you want to know that if you're working with an artist, that they're producing enough work that you can kind of have a full exhibition. It, it's not always theme. It's sometimes the subject is what binds the body of work together, but more often than not, it is um, uh, a consistent practice and process that binds it together. So. For example, Michael Payan uh, pulls a lot of his uh, material from uh, old um, anatomy books. You know, that's part of his practice. Um, it, he doesn't pull from any possible print source ever, right? His practice is fairly focused. And um, Michael Payan, Christopher will uh, hopefully put it in the link, um, understanding where your materials come from and being consistent about that for a body of work that helps create a cohesive body of work. Um, stylistically, dealing with certain subjects, dealing with certain narratives, uh, all of those things will help bring a body of work together. And so that definitely helps, uh, helps when kind of understanding an artist, understanding how they work and how they um, create art. Um, it also helps you. like. Um, it helps you as an artist to not just make one of something, but to make, you know, 10 of that to continue exploring and investigating um, what that particular body of work is about. Now, I'm guilty of this. One of my favorite things to do as an artist is to make one of something. In fact, I, I'm seriously considering doing a Box of Barbies show where it's just like the one-offs of things I make, in part because I'm interested often in how to make that one thing. And, um, but that's not about me creating a body of work, that's about me exploring and developing as an artist and finding my voice or exploring the idea of a project as opposed to working the idea of a project. So, yeah, uh, next relation, question. In relation yeah. to that, uh, do you have any advice for people who work across extremely different styles um, that might be dabbling in a bunch of different things? how to draw their work together, maybe? Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, as artists, we're, this is a tension, I think, that the art world wants us to make only one kind of thing, you know? And often artists want to do disparate things and have different types of bodies of work, and they can often compete with one another. And the problem is, is that when you throw them all out, um, you come off as scatterbrained and not very serious. And so, um, I don't think that's necessarily fair. I don't think that's the right way to read an artist, um, but I think that is an accurate characterization of what goes on in the art world. Um, I try to focus on an artist's body of work, and they may have different bodies of work that are really different, and sometimes there's an overarching practice that brings it together, and sometimes there isn't, that these are two very different practices. Um, and so it's uh, at that point, what I think an artist wants to do is decide which one are they speaking about at this given moment in time. You know, I'm, and I'm working with an artist now, I'm writing about an artist for the next issue who created a remarkable body of work that is really dealing with mid-century advertising. And all of her other work, all of her other work is about, is largely um, abstract work. This work is um, very representational, probably more traditionally analog collage than her other work that often involves a lot of paint. And so she's really had to kind of say, 
this is a body of work, but this is ultimately kind of what my work is about. And making sure those distinctions are understood as she talks to writers and, and gallerists and other folks. Uh, and I, so I think we have time for one more question and I wanted to yeah. get to this one because Brandon asked this question at the very beginning. Um, is there a preference in the world, uh, collage world for analog over digital? <laughs> um, and is there something that we can do about that? Um, and uh, specifically he says, given that analog allows for an original or physical copy to exist. Yeah. So, okay, uh, this is getting really technical, but a couple thoughts here. One is, um, uh, I don't care personally, like between digital or analog. I, uh, my philosophy is that art seems to be the only profession that insists on its practitioners mm -hmm. using antiquated tools. And so, you know, you don't go to a dentist because they're only using 19th century dental equipment. You know, you don't go to a lawyer who's only using 16th century legal thought, right? Uh, I think as artists, I think all of the tools should be available to us. And uh, that, uh, I, I make no distinction um, ultimately between analog versus digital. However, uh, with respect to digital collage, that there are folks who are conceptualizing digital collage as something that doesn't exist as an object. And this is a part of a practice that I think is problematic. Um, uh, uh, there are artists who have established practice in digital collage and they tend to adapt strategies for organizing their work that are similar to how photographers organize their work, meaning that they addition a print or they create a print, that a print has an addition number, and that is the, the object that exists in the, in the real world. Um, I think a digital artist uh, who only exists as pi pixels, um, uh, maybe I'm a little old fashioned, and, and, and I'd be more than happy to have a bar fight about this. Uh, but I, I, you know, I think that art that only exists in, in as pixels um, occupies a different space and functions differently in the world than art that manifests as a material physical object. And so with digital, and I make digital collage on top of other stuff as well. And so, but for me, it's not done until it exists as a physical object. Um, that said, I'm not opposed to work that only exists as pixel, um, but we are going to print it on paper in the magazine. What does that mean? Um, where is the idea? And uh, I welcome articles on that. I welcome arguments and dissent on that. It's a fascinating topic, but I would say that for those artists that work digitally, um, what is your practice? How do you put it out in the world? How is it seen? How does it get exhibited? How does it get written about? Those are all questions that I think are part of uh, developing one's art practice that are fair game. And, and so that, that's kind of what I want to hear and see. I'll also say that, you know, within the pages of Collage Magazine and also on the website, there are digital, digital artists that are showing in galleries uh, showing in museums, publishing and putting their work out there. Find them, find a model that works for you um, and copy it, <laughs> you know, do, do as your neighbor does. Um, because I think that that's, I think, uh, how one grows as an artist. So we're out of time today. I hope, I hope this was uh, enjoyable, helpful, engaging um, for you. Uh, I certainly love the opportunity to talk nonstop for an hour. Um, <laughs> but uh, I wish I could see everyone's faces. Um, and, uh, you know, we look forward to hearing from you at the magazine and uh, good luck. Um, thank you, everybody. I'm gonna uh, pop off, um, hang out in the chat for a little bit longer, but um, have a wonderful Sunday. We'll see everyone soon. Subscribe to Collage Magazine and goodbye. <laughs>